Despite playing at an all-NBA caliber level this year, I'm not sure there's a more underrated player in the NBA right now than Pascal Siakam. His play this season has been spectacular, and he's having a better season than his first All-Star season in 2020. Somehow, he wasn't selected to be an All-Star this year, which is still really surprising to me. He's one of the biggest reasons why the Raptors have been able to fly up the standings in the Eastern Conference, being in the hunt for the fifth seed right now. For a team that was labeled to be rebuilding, they're way ahead of schedule and it's largely due to contributions from Pascal Siakam. He went from being thrown around in trade rumors last year to now being a pretty clear pick to make an All-NBA team this season, and in this video I'm going to tell you why. Let's get right into it. There's a very specific aspect of Pascal Siakam's scoring that's improved greatly this season. And it's something that you may not have noticed unless you're a Raptors fan. A shot that he frequently hunts for is those shots that are inside the paint but just outside of the restricted area. They're not really around the rim and fall more into that short mid-range area. Siakam loves his mid-range shots and up until this year, it's just not a shot that you could rely on him to knock down on a consistent basis. Last year, he was shooting only 41% on these short mid-range shots, putting him in the 39th percentile of the league. This year though, he's shooting 48% on those shots, which is good for the top 20% in the NBA. Taking it even further, he's shooting 45% on all mid-range shots, which puts him well above that 42% league average mid-range efficiency. He's a truly good mid-range scorer now, and Raptors fans don't have to look away whenever he takes those turnaround shots in the mid-range anymore. He just looks significantly more comfortable when putting these shots up. See, creating the space for the shot was never the problem for Siakam. He's got enough length that he's able to get the shot up over just about any defender that he's matched up against. He had a solid enough of a turnaround that he could create space that way, but the touch on the shot just wasn't there and it wasn't falling. Now you can see that the shot looks much more comfortable. He's getting some more arch on it. He's not missing short nearly as much anymore and that touch has just improved so much over the last couple of years. This area of his scoring is a massive part of his game, so the fact that he's so drastically improved as a mid-range scorer has done wonders for his overall scoring game. But that's not the only area where he's improved. His three-point percentage is the highest it's been since 2019, sitting at a very solid 36.5% on the year. I like how he's been positioning himself to get open for three-pointers. On this play, he's going to head towards the corner like he's setting a pin down screen for Birch, so Herb Jones doesn't bother to follow him, assuming that he's going to need to switch onto Birch when he comes off of the pin down. Since Herb leaves him and Birch makes a baseline cut, Scotty is able to get the ball to him wide open in the corner for an easy three. He benefits a ton from the frustratingly confusing offensive actions that Nick Nurse implements in his offenses as they typically take defensive attention off of Siakam and usually end up leaving him wide open on the perimeter. Birch runs this dribble handoff coming out of another pin down and leading right into a wing ball screen for OG Ananobi to attack the middle of the floor, and it leaves Detroit's defense completely muddled up with three guys clumped together in Bay and Cade trying to guard the attack at the basket. All this time, Siakam is left wide open on the perimeter and OG is going to be able to find him for an easy shot. He's also been a really reliable pick and pop shooter. He can set some really high screens past the arc like on this play, and when the defense fails to switch and account for the pop, he's able to get the ball and just put up an easy wide open shot. Same situation here, when the defense doubles Van Vliet off of the screen, he's able to receive the ball up top and roll right into a set shot above the break. His active screening from beyond the arc usually results in a ton of open threes for him coming off of simple pick and pop actions, and with him hitting at the rate he's been hitting it throughout the season, it's made him a much more versatile scoring threat. He's shooting a pretty ridiculous 51% on corner threes, making him the sixth best corner three-point shooting forward in the entire NBA this season. The fact that he can attack the basket, create his own shot in the mid-range, and be a reliable catch-and-shoot perimeter threat has him having the best scoring season of his entire career, averaging 22.5 points per game. That finishing ability that he's always had is still there. He's shooting a fantastic 71% at the rim this year, so he's truly become a three-way scoring threat. But outside of his vastly improved and much more reliable scoring ability, there's another aspect of his game that's contributed to his evolution as an offensive engine. You see, Pascal Siakam has improved a ton as a playmaker, and it's done wonders for him in regards to providing for his team on offense in areas outside of just putting the ball in the basket. 
He's really been leveraging that attention he gets on post-ups and when he's attacking the paint to find open cutters for easy looks at the basket. Him and Scotty Barnes are developing a really fun two-man game that stems from not only Scotty's awesome instinct for making cuts to the basket, but also Siakam's much improved feel for the game. They love this simple play where Siakam gets the ball in the high post with Scotty on the perimeter, and Scotty just makes a simple baseline cut while the defense prepares to guard Siakam. It allows Siakam to just easily thread the pass to Barnes for an easy bucket. On this play, Siakam has the ball in the post and he's getting doubled. Scotty makes a cut and Siakam is just able to easily feed it to him, resulting in another easy two points. I like this play a lot because the Raptors are going to form two separate triangles in the half court. Trent gets it to Birch, Birch gets it to Siakam, forming that first triangle of ball movement. But then Scotty is going to come up along the baseline, forming another triangle between Siakam, Birch, and Scotty. The advantage of this play is that the Raptors pulled two defenders out of the play entirely with Mills and Curry who were guarding Gary Trent Jr. and Malachi Flynn. And then James Johnson has to try and recover off the pass out of the double team. Aldridge then has to guard Birch and Brown has to pull off Barnes to guard Siakam. This leaves Barnes wide open for Siakam to find him for an easy bucket. He makes such smart finds to cutters and can initiate these plays flawlessly. It's one thing for Nick Nurse to draw them up and implement this offense, it's another thing to effectively execute it at a high level, and it's something that Pascal Siakam has proven that he's more than capable of doing. Being able to run your offense through him creates all sorts of mismatches for the defense, and the fact that he's a 51% shooter on post-ups means that he demands a ton of defensive attention when he's being fed in the post. With the Raptors' movement-heavy offense, it makes his life a lot easier in regards to playmaking. Now, on the other end of the floor, Siakam has been fantastic. He definitely deserves some All-NBA recognition this year. He's one of the most versatile bigs in the NBA, being able to guard all sorts of different matchups, and he's reliable when guarding the perimeter. And then, of course, he's still able to go down low and provide rim protection at a high level, making him incredibly important when a switch-heavy defense is required to slow down the opposing team. We can see some of his versatility on this play. He's anchoring the interior in case of a drive, but when the ball is swung to Crowder, he shuts him down entirely and the possession ultimately results in a miss by Ayton. Now look at the hustle that he shows on this play. He's flying all over the court and shutting down the ball wherever it ends up. He just has a ridiculous engine and his enthusiasm on the defensive end isn't just purposeless effort. It's intentional and done with an understanding of what to do in order to stop the other team. On this play, he's operating more as an interior rim deterrent and he forces the miss, resulting in the Raptors getting possession back. Now the numbers are really deceiving, averaging only 1.2 steals per game and less than a block per game. But those don't even begin to do his defense justice. He provides so much value on the defensive end that's not going to show up in the box score. He's one of the most versatile defenders in the entire NBA, and he's the defensive anchor of the Raptors' entire defense. He didn't make an all-star team this year, which I'm just going to assume the only reason he didn't is that he missed time at the beginning of the year. Otherwise, he absolutely deserved to make the all-star team. Not only that, but like I said, he's worthy of making an all-defensive team, and I'd take it even a step further and say that he has a pretty solid case for making an all-NBA team. It's crazy because this is the same guy that some talking heads were saying the Raptors should consider packaging in a trade. He's a legitimate all-star that continues to show that he can improve year to year and provide so much value to your team. I don't think we've even seen the best version of Siakam yet, and I'm fully confident that he can continue to build upon the development that we've seen from him. So do you think that Siakam deserves to make an All-NBA team? Let me know in the comments below, and as always, if you're new to the channel and enjoyed the video, why not consider hitting that subscribe button? Only 5% of the people who watch my videos are subscribed, so if you love the NBA, I'm posting content all the time. It's totally free, and it helps me out a ton. Don't forget to leave a like on the video. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.